Big Melvin came in and slammed the door on him. So the Mud Hens lead it five to one. And the new pitcher is now coming in. He was on the DL. And it's going to be uh, Sook Minyoon. Well, this will be his first appearance out of the pen ah. for the Norfolk Tides. He has a record of 3-7, and seven, a 5.51 ERA, and 16 appearances. They were all starts, Jim. He's worked 78 and a third innings, giving up 97 hits, 48 earned runs. He has walked 16, struck out 54. Opponents hit 304 against him. It's a pretty hefty batting average. Yes, it is. Against the pitcher. Danny Worth starts the bottom of the eighth. The Mud Hens would love to add some insurance, and it looks like Big Melvin will finish it up. Again, it's not a safe situation. And if Melvin can do that, it saves the rest of the bullpen. And the Mud Hens will be going into Indy very fresh. Yeah, that would be a big help. If he, can, if he can get through this game with only using two pitchers. The only thing we're missing right now is one more position player, and maybe the Tigers will make a move there. Right, we only have three outfielders listed right. on there. Now Wade Gaynor can obviously play there. Oh, yeah, Gaynor can play out there with no problem. Uh, and we have others that could. but They could, but... Gaynor would be the one. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an outfielder. Played a lot of left and right besides uh, first and third. We've talked about that, and he told us that during one of the shows that it's been his career in college and in professional baseball. Here's the 3 1 from Yoon. It's popped out of play. Sukmin Yoon follows Chris Jones, who went seven, allowing the Mud Hens nine hits. And five runs, of which I believe only three were earned. As Danny Worth hits one out to short. Scooped up by DeJesus on over to Walker in time. And Worth is out 6-3. And it brings up Daniel Fields. So the Tides will get one more shot in the ninth inning. And, and they're, yeah, they're scheduled batters at the bottom third of the order. And Francisco Figueroa, Henry Uratia, and Cord Phelps. Oh, here comes Daniel. Jeez, how many runs are the Indians going to score tonight? They're up 12-1 in the sixth inning. <laughs> yeah, I think they got that one wrapped up. There's a strike into Daniel. Wade Gaynor up next. I wonder if there are a lot of fans for the Indians that are thinking, why our team certainly believes we're out of it because they traded Masterson. Then they traded as Drupal Cabrera yesterday. Yeah, that surprised me. To Washington. Great pickup for Washington. They who'd they, who'd they get from the Nationals? Uh, they ended up getting a uh, uh, Zach Walters, I think. Uh, shortstop that we've seen before in AAA. One ball, two strikes on Daniel Fields. As Yoon fires, and it's hit down the third baseline foul. Hold on, I could be a little bit off on the name there. Let me, yeah, it was Zach Walters. I was right on. One ball, two strikes on Fields with uh, an 0 for 3 night, safe once on an error. And we've seen him before with Syracuse, Jim. At 1 2 pitches way outside. Two balls, two strikes. We're in the bottom half of the eighth. The Mud Hens wouldn't, uh, wouldn't mind adding an insurance run or two. And here's one popped up down the third baseline. It's going to be out of play. About two rolls in behind the, tarp, uh, the tarp there. And here's the scramble. Of course, they're making room for Francisco Lindor, their top prospect for the Indians, who is a shortstop. And where's he at? A uh, ball, he is a. in Triple A. He yes. just got promoted there. He's playing in the game tonight. He's 0 for 4, but batting 282 with the Clippers. So we're going to see him most likely. Yeah, Walters is 2 for 3 tonight. <laughs> and Yoon fires the uh, changeup 76 miles an hour up high to make it 3 2 on fields. They are blocking off Monroe Street, getting ready for the fireworks show. The 3 2, and he got him with a changeup. Swing and a miss, strike three. 76 miles an hour. Two pitches in a row. Two down, and here comes Wade Gaynor. 
Gaynor with a double. His last time up, one for three. Well, again, now if the Mud Hens win this game, they'll be two games under 500. And right now, Columbus is still in a tie game, I think. Because of they the, are 4 4. Yeah, if the Clippers would lose, it's going to tighten up the entire league. It would uh, give us a three and a half game separation top to bottom. But then again, we don't know if uh, Louisville's going to win the game. And there's a smash to left center. And uh, with a dive, it is. Oh, and he dropped the ball. Now, are they going to give it? No, the third base umpire says no catch. Yep. He had it, and then it got away. So Wade now two for four with a single. Let's watch this again. He had it momentarily, but not long enough. He didn't hold control. See right there? Well, maybe you know he didn't, never did have it. Did I, yeah, I don't think he ever had it, Jim. No, it doesn't look like it. Now that we see it in the slow motion replay. So nah. how about Wade? 0 for 21, back-to-back -back hits. Yeah, he never did have that ball. Two-out single. Here's Hernan Perez, 3 for 4 in the game. Well, let's see. You're up 4. There's two down, so let's see if Wade takes off for second base. Yep, there he goes on the first pitch. Throw down, and he, well, they're going to say that he's out. I'm not so sure about that. I agree with you on this one. Yeah, it looked like the foot was in there. It looked like the foot was in there, but not according to the umpire. So let's watch it again before we go to break. All right, here it comes. Let's watch the foot. Oh, and he, well, he was safe. Oh, yeah. I would say it's close, but his foot was in there before the tear. We'll see it from this angle. Watch. He is there. It's close, but I think the foot just got if, in there. If anything, it's a tie. Then it ought to be a stolen base. Yep, I agree. That's the inning. Nothing across. One hit. Nobody left. The Tides get one more shot. Big Melvin's out there to try and finish it up. It's Toledo 5. The Tides 1. This is Bud Hens Baseball. <laughs>